and having just experienced the worst economic crisis since the Great Depression. In the wake of an economic crisis. In the wake of an economic crisis. As if this economic crisis has already passed. Just experience, just experience, just experience. And having just experienced the worst economic crisis since the Great Depression. We are now in the second major collapse of capitalism in 75 years. And if you count, there were about a dozen smaller or not so small downturns in the interval. If you live with a person as unstable as the economic system in which you exist, you demand they get professional help. This is not a good thing. It's not a good thing for people. It's not a good thing for progressive politics whatsoever. Almost 15 million unemployed, the highest since 1939. By the middle of next year, 10.3% unemployment, perhaps 10.5% by the end of the year. Over the course of the year, you have over a third of the people are going to be unemployed or underemployed at some point in 2010. And that puts the actual unemployment rate at a staggering 17.5 percent. A gentleman by the name of Larry Spanuleski from Madison Heights, Michigan, out of work since May of 2008. He has 10 weeks of benefits left. And if we don't extend it, he'll exhaust those benefits before the end of the year. He said, and I quote, I'm just waiting for the right phone call. Come to work. The American Society of Civil Engineers report card for America's infrastructure reveals a nation woefully underachieving in virtually every category. We had 11 Ds and 4 Cs. If I was a parent and my child came home with those grades, I would not be happy. The near-failing grades mean the critical systems supporting modern American society are becoming inadequate or outright dangerous. It's a disgrace, frankly, the condition that our infrastructure is in. Unemployment rate, as you know, currently stands at a high. Jim's new home, a small tent with six layers of tarp to keep out the rain. Homeless rate is growing at an alarming rate as people who just a few months ago had decent jobs suddenly find themselves with no place to go. Disturbing, the number of vacant homes in America has now reached a record level. Take a look. The homeowner vacancy rate now stands at 2.9 percent. So nearly 3 percent of all homes in America are now standing vacant. And these are not rental properties. 18.6 million homes. A few weeks ago, this was a brand new model home and you can see them destroying it right now. It's sad to watch actually knowing that someone could have lived in these homes. To suddenly go move into a tent and you have to learn a lot of new things. For the last 30 years, the real wages, what you actually get to spend for an hour of the average American's work, hasn't gone up. We're earning about the same per hour as we did 30 years ago. That's a traumatic change in a society that for the previous 150 years had a rising wage. Today, the average number of hours worked by an American worker is 20% more than the average number of hours worked by a French, German, Italian, or Swedish worker. <coughs> That's not a small difference. American workers are exhausted. And the second thing the American working class did, besides work itself to death, physically and emotionally, with the aid of the business community was to substitute borrowing for wages in order to keep the consumption going. And for 20 years, we took on a level of debt that no working class in any country at any time in the history of this planet ever did before. Uh, and the result is you built up an economy on a house of credit cards. Give you just one statistic. When the Great Depression started in the 19, early 30s, the average level of debt of an American family was about 20% of their annual income. The average level of debt of an American family today is 130% of its annual income. That very fact tells you not only the credit bubble that was created, but also the impossibility of now having some quick fix, including these big stimulus plans, because they're not adequate to a 30-year built-up level of impossibility that we have integrated into our economic system. A full quarter of the children in the country, one in four, 
are on food stamps. More Americans are depending on food stamps and food banks, especially senior citizens. Apparently, one in eight Americans right now are on food stamps. The United Nations World Food Program has called a silent tsunami of hunger. It's been described as the worst food crisis since the 1970s. According to the Food and Agricultural Organization, more than a billion people, or one-sixth of the world's population, go hungry every day. The matter is that staggering unemployment rates, um, poverty, and food insecurity are increasing across the nation, and all of the economists are predicting that those staggering unemployment rates are going to last into 2012. So it's very difficult for those of us who are working on the front lines to understand what's meant by recovery and recession ending, because it's not ending anytime soon for the people we serve. 47 million Americans are uninsured, and millions of others are vulnerable to morbidities that have decreased in other developed nations. The United States spends massive amounts of money for its health care, but the World Health Organization ranks the U.S. 37th overall, surpassed by number one France and its neighbor Canada, ranked 30th. <laughs> People choosing to take their own lives is spiking. First increase in the suicide rate in a decade. The U.S. suicide rate has climbed steadily. 140 active duty U.S. Army suicides so far in 2009. The cost of one modern heavy bomber is this. A modern brick school in more than 30 cities. It is two electric power plants, each serving a town of 60,000 population. It is two fine, fully equipped hospitals. We pay for a single fighter plane with a half million bushels of wheat. We pay for a single destroyer with new homes that could have housed more than 8,000 people. This is not a way of life at all, in any true sense. Under the cloud of threatening war, it is humanity hanging from a cross of iron. The U.S. has spent more than $15 trillion to build up its military might. Just how much is $15 trillion worth? It adds up to more than the cumulative monetary value of all human-made wealth in the United States. In other words, the government has spent more on the military over the last four decades than the value of all the factories, machinery, roads, bridges, water and sewage systems, airports, railroads, power plants, office buildings, shopping centers, schools, hospitals, hotels, houses, etc in this country put together. Modern weapons take food from the hungry and shelter from the homeless. A nation woefully underachieving in virtually every category. Increase in the suicide rate. In Almost 15 million unemployed. Homeless rate is growing at an alarming rate. Increases in the number of people who are uninsured. Nearly 3% of all homes in America are now standing vacant. One out of every five Americans don't have a job. One in eight Americans right now are on food stamps. 7.2% of workers in the private sector and unions. And That's if you right. throw in all the public sector workers, you just might make it to 11. This is not a good thing. It's not a good thing for people. It's not a good thing for progressive politics whatsoever. Things are so bad and our priorities are so skewed that it's kind of hard to get a grip on it. And this is my attempt at a Jones report, a report on where the average American is right now. I mean, we take a look at our national priorities and an assistance program like the Temporary Assistance Needy Families, in which in 2007 we spent $4.5 billion that's in cash assistance to needy families. That's 1% of TARP money. Citibank alone received 25 billion. That's five times the cash transfer to mothers and children receiving public assistance in 2007. This financial crisis is far from over, and it's unfortunate that President Barack Obama continues to speak of it in the past tense. It's gonna be up to us, left wing, right wing, conservative, liberal, radicals and apolitical to work together to form coalitions to push for radical change in our economic system. If the history of social change is to teach us anything, it's that we must have hope in ourselves. We must begin to invest in ourselves because when we as a people are ready to lead, our leaders will follow.